So in this video, we are going to discuss some last entry test past paper questions which are related to the topic trigonometric graphs, right? So let's get started. So obviously, when we talk about trigonometry, we have different trigonometric functions like sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in these questions, we will be discussing their graphs and the functions as well. Okay, like their domain, their range, the graph shape, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's get started. This is the first question. Domain of sine function is now although this question is very easy but most of the time students mix up domain with period no period is a different thing domain is a different thing right we'll talk about period later on right now we are talking about the domain so when we say domain we just have to think about the sine graph okay so if i plot the sine graph here let's say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis where I have sine x, it would be of this shape. Although we just plot this much because we are only interested in, you know, plotting it for one period, that is still 2 pi. This is pi. But this does not imply that the domain of sine graph is from 0 to 2 pi, no. It has all the positive and negative numbers even if they are fractions, decimals, whole numbers, every number is included in the domain of sine. And this graph goes on continuously on both the um, left side and the right side, right? So this means that the answer is A because in the domain, we have all the real numbers, okay? So we are done with the first question, okay? The second question, range of cosine function. Now, when we talk about range, we talk about the value of function right and we know that the value of cosine function talk think about cosine function as y equals cos of x okay so since we have one here it means that the value of function would be between one and minus one and all the entries would be real right as in we are not saying that we only have integers or fractions or whole numbers no we have all the positive and negative uh, numbers or real numbers between one and minus one, right? So the answer would be A. The range has numbers such that all those numbers are real numbers and they are between minus one and one and minus one and one are also included because if I quickly plot the graph of sine, this value is one and this value would be minus one this is x and this is cos x or y it's totally your choice whatever you want to say okay now let's talk about the third question domain of tangent function okay now when we talk about the tangent function obviously um again the domain is not the period right be very clear with that but this time around we can't say that the domain is the set of real numbers because we don't have all the real numbers we do have some uh, you know numbers missed in the domain for example if i quickly plot the graph of tangent function we know that <clears throat> if this is the x-axis and y-axis so the graph would look like this then we have a dotted line we don't have anything over here and again the graph goes on like this and then again a dotted line and then this type of thing right and we have same situation on the left side as well that is on the negative x-axis right now if i talk about the values so this line is basically x equals pi by 2 this line is x equals 3 pi by 2 and so on this means that the domain has all the real values except the real values on this dotted line okay, because we don't have any graph there. So all the real values except those values where we have odd multiples of pi by 2. When I say odd multiples, I mean 2k plus 1. And why odd? Because that dotted line is coming on pi by 2. Then it is coming on 3 pi by 2. Then it would come on 5 pi by 2, right? So 
for tangent function we don't have every real number yes we do have real numbers but these dotted lines are not included in the domain right the dotted lines at x equals pi by 2 and at x equals 3 pi by 2 we don't have any graph there so we need to subtract that uh, condition from the set of real numbers okay let's talk about the fourth question period of cotangent function okay now when we say period basically period is the interval after which our graph repeats so before discussing this let's just plot the cotangent function so if this is the y axis this is the x axis and the cotangent function is of this type then we have a dotted line just like we have it in tan then again it is the same type of a thing and so on right so this means that this graph is being repeated after this value because it is the same graph so this value is pi and then this is 2 pi so this means that the period would be pi because it is being repeated after pi right let me just draw it neatly just so it is more understandable it is this type of a thing right so the period is pi because our graph is repeated after pi right so let's talk about the fifth question okay the fifth question is which graph is of sine function so we know that sine function has a sinusoidal shape so it is basically a wave of this type of this type so the only option is b this should be 180 and this should be 360 and this is 1 and this is minus 1 right okay so b is the answer let's talk about the next question okay now if i talk about the seventh question domain of cosine function again we are talking about the domain and we know that although the period of cosine is 2 pi because after 2 pi our graph is repeated but the answer is not 2 pi okay we are interested in the values of x axis on the graph of cosine function so if i only plot one side i know that this is the thing which i get and this is 2 pi but this graph can go on continuously to on the both left and right sides and on the x axis we have all the positive numbers and we have all the negative numbers we have whole numbers decimal numbers fractions so this means that the answer would be a that is the set of real numbers because that is the do. okay let's talk about the eighth question now graph of cosine function is okay now we have the graph of cosine function right first thing is first what is cosine function okay so the graph would be b choice right because this is the graph of cos okay right we have one here we have minus 1 here it is 0 and 0 on these points and yeah this is the shape c is for tan d is for cotan and what about a a is for cosecant right a is for cosecant okay because cosecant is basically 1 by sin so that is why we can think about it this way as well okay but anyways we are interested in the graph of cos so it would be b right so let's talk about the next question um right so we have the ninth question then range of cosecant function okay now we are interested in the range of cosecant function 
Now, first thing is first, what is cosecant function? Cosecant function is 1 by sine, right? 1 by sine x. And we know that um, 1 by sine x is the cosecant function, right? And if we talk about the range, we are obviously interested in the values of y, right? So in order to understand this, let's just go and refer to the graph of cosecant function. It is right here, the one which we have just discussed. Let's talk about the A, A curve and think about it as the curve of cosecant function. Now we know that this is 1 and this is minus 1, right? So what do we have? We have all the values, but we don't have 1 and minus 1, right? So this means that the answer would be, the range would be all the real values, all the real values except uh, the values between minus 1 and 1, right? So the answer would be C answer. We have to be very, very careful with this that since we're talking about cosecant, in cosecant, we have 1 by sine x and our graph is different, right? So this time around, we have every real value except the values between minus 1 and 1 and minus 1 and 1 are not included, right? And a better understanding of this um, can be uh, seen through the shape of cosecant curve, right? That this is the line of y equals minus uh, y equals 1. And this is the line of y equals minus 1. And since we don't have any graph on this part, so we will exclude that from range. And we have all the real numbers except this range. Okay. Let's talk about the 10th question. Period of secant function is. Okay. Now we are interested in the period of secant function. But what do we understand by secant function? Secant function can be written as 1 by cos, okay? And now, if I have to plot that curve, if I plot the curve of secant function, I know that I will be having a fixed graph every time, obviously. So let's just plot that. And then we will talk about the period. Because when we talk about the period, we know that our graph repeats after a certain value and that basically is seen in order to find the period. Okay, so it is 1 by cos. Let's just plot the curve of cos first. If I plot the curve of cos first, this is what I'm going to get. And now if I use a different color in order to plot secant function, I am going to get this. Then we have a dotted line because the value of function is getting zero and we don't have any value there. Then it is this and then again a dotted line and then it is this and after this 2 pi, our graph is repeated. Since our graph repeats after 2 pi, this means that the period would be till 2 pi only, right? Because as soon as our graph starts repeating, we just stop there and we say that that very value affects us the period. So 2 pi would be the period. So in this video, we have discussed first 10 questions which are related to the uh, trigonometric functions and trigonometric graphs. We have seen how to find range, domain. We have differentiated between different um, graphs of cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotan. So in the next video, we will talk about some more questions. So that is it for this video.